good morning. It's a frosty morning, to say the least, as you can tell by my get up. Uh, I've come down to uh, Mothercombe Beach on the South Devon coast. It's not far from where I live, probably about a about 20 minute drive, if that. So I've come down here pre dawn. As you can see in the background, I've got a nice inky blue sky, and I'm under moonlight at the moment, so it's, there's, quite, there's quite nice light actually. And I'm going to start off by shooting down the, on the front here uh, before the sun comes up. Now I'm down here today with my new setup. I've got the Canon EOS R, which I bought um, just after Christmas. It's it's kind of replaced my, my 6D camera. It was going to replace my M3 system as well, but that's what I'm filming this with. I've decided to keep the M3 purely as my, my backup camera and, uh, and, and for the vlogging side of things as well for the time being. I just find it's, it's easier just to use this camera. So yeah, I've come down with the EOS R and I want to talk through my my experience if you like with the with the camera that i've had uh, i've been shooting with it for just over two or three weeks now so this isn't going to be a full full hands-on review it's uh, it's more of a user a user review uh, what i like about the camera so far what i don't like how i'm getting on with it a few little bits on there in the menus and things that i've discovered so yeah i'm gonna get uh, I'm going to get set up. Uh, I'm going to make the most of this moonlight now before it disappears. And as you can see in the background, this is where I'm going to shoot from. These uh, little pools on the beach here that are reflecting the light. So without further ado, I'm going to get set up and then I'll talk you through it. So the first shot I've got here in this pre-dawn light with the moon above me. I've got this nice wet sand here in the foreground. These little tributaries, if you want to call them that, and it's given me a nice leading line as well. And I've bumped the ISO up to ISO 800 for this shot, just to get a little bit more sensitivity with the sensor, a bit more light, especially in the foreground. And I've used a, I've used a grad as well, so I don't know if you can see this. I sort of pull the grad down just to hold that in and obviously balance the uh, balance the exposure up so the lights uh, lights coming up a bit now i'd say the best way to learn how to use the camera is to use it in the dark i've always found that if you can master it in the dark you can master it anywhere yeah, as you can see in the background now, I'm getting a bit more light. I've still got these lovely, these lovely little pools of water, and which are reflecting the light. So I've taken a few, taken a few shots while I'm here, I'm waiting for the sun to come up. And there's a couple of guys turned up surfing. I don't know why they're surfing. There's no waves. Yeah. So what did I swap to the uh, to the ESR? Well, first and foremost. I wanted a camera that was going to replace two systems originally. That was my DSLR system and this camera that I'm filming with now. But as it turns out, I've decided to keep this M3, which I am, this is a mirrorless camera, but I've decided to keep that and use it to, uh, to vlog with. It makes life a lot easier rather than vlogging and doing stills with one camera. So with that out of the way, the EOS R, it's compact. The quality of the images alone are just, I think it's the same sensor and, and the guts of the, uh, the 5D4, but in a smaller compact body and obviously the mirrorless system. Quality wise, it's, it's fantastic. I mean, the image quality, which is the most important thing to me, is, is just absolutely superb. Uh, I can't fault it at all. I've been using it now for a couple of weeks, shot in various different conditions, including in the dark, and as you saw this morning, it's, uh, yeah, it's a little bit quirky. I'd say handling-wise, it's, 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 it is very different to a DSLR system. So if you are kind of thinking of swapping, just be aware that it is, um, it's, a different, it's a different experience. I find the, the electronic viewfinder, the EVF, it is very good on this camera in low light, I must admit. But it takes a bit of getting used to. It's not, you don't get the same view through that through the viewfinder as you do with the DSLR because it is electronic, it's an electronic view. But in terms of usability, it's, it's quite useful. I mean, you can get, uh, obviously when you're adjusting your exposure, you can get the, uh, the effect of that, 
that difference in the viewfinder as well as on the back of the screen. So while I'm waiting for the sun to come up, uh, should have a little while yet, let's have a look at my, uh, my EOS R in a little bit more detail. Handling wise, I mean, I've got quite big hands, so it's um, it, it's okay. The grip is is quite substantial. I'm able to sort of hold it nicely. Um, it's it's nice and light. The the actual material that they use on the back here and on the front of the grip is nice and grippy. So yeah, it's um, it, it, it's quite nice. One of the bits I really like about this camera is the articulated screen. Not only does it flip out to the side, it tilts around. I've got a, an L bracket here, so it's kind of restricting it a bit there at the moment, but. You can tilt it around and also you can flip it right around so if you are using the camera to vlog with which i do use this camera occasionally now to to vlog with when i'm doing my large format shoots it's really handy because obviously that faces the the front so you can see what you're doing but the best thing is when you aren't using it and you're storing the camera you can basically flip it to one side and it, it doesn't get damaged. The button layout is fairly good. It's, uh, it's an LCD on the top, which gives you all your information. You've got a little backlight button there as well, which kind of lights that up. Uh, you can go into the multi-function button at the top, and then this gives you a quick access to your ISO speeds, the drive, things like exposure compensation, white balance, all that sort of thing, which is quite handy to have on the top there. And also your record button is uh, is on the top. You can assign um, different various functions to, to these buttons on the camera. And on the back of the camera, very similar to my DSLR setup, your info buttons, play buttons, cue, cue screen, all this sort of thing on the back. You've also got this multi-function bar, which I haven't assigned anything to to that as yet I, I to me it seems a little bit gimmicky i'm not really too keen on this it's it it can be quite accident you know, easy to accidentally knock it and um reset things when you don't want to uh, but yeah overall the the actual layout of the camera it's uh it, it's quite intuitive it's it takes takes a while to set the camera up it's worth spending a bit of time with your menus uh and actually setting up your buttons the way you want it but once you're done, it's um, it's pretty good. So yeah, handling-wise, pretty good. It, it feels good in your hand. One little annoyance, which I don't like, is um, with the EVF, it's got a little sensor on the back. So when you're using the screen, as soon as you put it up to your eye, the screen goes off, and obviously what's on the screen comes through the viewfinder. But that can be a little annoying when you're using the screen and you just pass your finger or something in front of that sensor and it keeps going on and off. I do believe you can set that to uh, you know to off so it doesn't doesn't work basically. It is kind of an integral part of the EVF system, so it's, it can be a little bit annoying sometimes. And I've got um, I've got my 17 to 40 on this morning. I would say it's quite a bit lighter than a than a DSLR system. It's definitely smaller. I've got a 100 to 400 lens as well. And so with that combination, it, it's quite hefty. Obviously, that lens itself is quite a heavy lens. As you can see I've got an L bracket on my camera. I've been using those for years now. It just makes it a little bit more um, you know, easy to, to, to use on the tripod. One little thing I will say though is with an L bracket make sure you get one with a little cutout on the on the side so when you're using a cable release or a microphone cable all that sort of thing when you're in upright on an L bracket it's got that little gap for the uh, for the cable to sit through. Another nice little feature with the uh, with the EVF is when you take a picture, not only does it come up on the on the rear screen, uh, the preview of the picture, it also comes up in the EVF. So you can look through that, shut off all external light, and you get a nice nice clear view of the picture you've just taken. Plus, you can zoom in to that picture through the EVF, so, so you can check sharpness a lot better than you could do on the on the back of the screen. The touch screen is really responsive, so any section that you want to get into, it's very easy, very very nice and sensitive to, to touch as well, so it's fairly easy to use. 
When I'm shooting my 4x5 setup, I tend to use this camera to vlog with. My microphone sits on top, and then, like I said before, the screen can flip out that way, so you can kind of see what you're doing. One little niggle is to get to the, the video side of things, you've got to go into mode on the top, then you've got to press info, and then choose one of your shooting modes, as like so. You can either touch the button, press Q to set, and then you're in video mode. But it's a little bit kind of, you know, you can you can press the record button when you're in any other mode, and it does start to record. But if you want a specific video mode, you've got to go that route. And then obviously to get back again, you do the same again. So you go back to manual, and you're back into manual exposure. And one little feature that I was very interested in, um, I have tried this out the other day and it, it, does, it does work really well, is a time lapse feature that's in, built into the camera with its own intervalometer. If you go into the mode button, info, and choose manual video setting, and then section two, you've got time lapse movie. Just go into that, enable that one. Um, you could do it in 4K or full HD, 1080p. Now you can change your interval between each shot, the number of shots that you want to take, auto exposure, which basically means you can um, record day to night or night to day time lapses, holy grail time lapses as they're called, and it does it does change the exposure during the ramps, bulb ramps the exposure up during the um, or down during the uh, the actual uh, time lapse, and you you can. Disable the screen, so it obviously saves your battery power. But down here you can see it gives you, when you change your number of shots or your interval times, all that sort of thing, it, it, it shows you the actual playback time that you'll get on the clip and how many minutes, hours um, it takes to, to shoot the time lapse. Really useful feature, purely because it saves so much time in processing. I have tried it recently I won't I won't go too in, de in depth into it today I'll probably do a separate video on this because it's it's quite a useful feature all on its own so yeah very very good so one little useful feature that I found with this um, on the screen is basically you can line your subject up and you can actually touch the screen where you want it to focus so if I put the info button off there if I put it out of focus again if I just want to touch where I want it to focus, it locks it in on the screen, which is quite handy. Again, it's not something that I use all the time, but it's quite a handy feature to have. Now in manual focus, which I use mainly for landscapes, I press my magnification tool, then press info. It then zooms in on where I want to focus, so I can line that up with the focus. Obviously focus manually. and lock that focus in and then zoom back out again but my main reason for buying this camera was the uh, was the image quality it's it produces really crisp clear images size wise as well it's a it's a 30.1 megapixel sensor and i'm getting the raw files are around 180 megabytes by the time you've you've converted them back to say an 8-bit tiff you're getting you're still getting about an 80 megabyte file which is which is huge you know to be honest it's um it's much much bigger than you need really but uh my, my thinking is always, you know, the bigger the image you start with, the, the, the better the quality, the bigger you can blow it up. So yeah, it, it, it will take up more space on your hard drive, the images. That's one thing to bear in mind. But it, you yeah, know, the pictures themselves are, are really crisp and clear. And they need very little processing, I've found so far. Very good. Very good on the highlights and shadow detail. It's, uh, it's pretty good. So while I'm waiting for that uh, all-important light, let's go through the good points and bad points about the, the EOS R so far. First and foremost, handling. It, it's, it's very nice. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's very similar to my DSLR, but there are a few quirks. That brings me on to the EVF. It's, it's very good. It's very useful. It's nice to be able to see in, inside that viewfinder uh, and get your playback images as well as the, the actual brightness of the view. Touchscreen, uh, again, it's, it's, it's quite useful. I do like that. Um, and obviously the, the screen itself as well, fully articulated screen, a very useful feature, I really love that bit about the camera. But overall the, the main good point, if you like, is the, is the image quality, which is why I put the camera in the first place. It's, it's just superb, can't fault it at all. Now bad points, 
one thing on the back of the camera which I don't like is there's no joystick like you'd find on, on the older DSLR systems and also this multi-function bar I, I can't really see at the moment whether I'll, I'll use that it, it's a feature that I don't think I really need to be there I'd rather have the joystick than, than that, that slider thing on the top there the other thing which niggles me is the the route to get to your video recording settings it's a bit of a faff having to press you know, mode buttons, function buttons, info buttons, just to try and get to that that point in the in the system is um, is a little bit fiddly to say the least. And last but not least, why haven't they put a twin card slot on? It's it's got a single card slot, takes SD cards. It would have been nice to have two two card slots because purely for my for my benefit, I I. I I'm using this camera now to vlog with as well, uh, as well as a stills camera. It would be nice to switch between the two two card slots, one for the for the video, and then a separate card for the stills. Just makes life a little bit easier when you when you're processing. So that's enough waffle about cameras. I've got a nice composition set up here. You can see in the distance there, the, the little pill box, I think they're called, little um, tower. Uh, the light's creeping down through the trees. The tide is creeping around my feet. Uh, so I'm, and I'm still waiting for that sun to pop over the horizon, but it, as you can see from the tree line there, it's only gonna be another five, 10 minutes, I would have thought. So I've got this shot set up here. Nice foreground rocks with a diagonal sort of leading you into the shot and I've got a nice rock pool in the middle distance. That'll catch the light when it comes up, which would be nice. And then these, these rocks going off on a diagonal and then leading to that little pillbox in the, in the background. There's nothing like an incoming tide to focus the mind. Uh, my feet are um, soaking at the moment. I've come back up the beach a little bit more, back to this little uh, coast guard cottage in the background. There's some nice, uh, there's a nice little uh, inlet uh, of water here with a with a kind of a short sand bank, uh, which is catching the light. Nice S shape to it as well. So I'm going to set up and um, get a shot of this uh, while the light's good. take a last few frames here on this side of the beach and then I'm going to pack up and make a move. Any questions or comments please leave them below and I'll try and get back to you. Thanks for watching and I'll uh, see you on the next one.